very pleasant evening to one and all present here our language is the reflection of ourselves it's not just words it's a culture a tradition a unification of a community a whole history that creates what a community is there is a famous quote that goes this way a smile is the universal welcome a man with abundant happiness himself may now request our president mr srinivas raghavan of mmba to deliver the welcome address very happy evening to one and all here as we all know mmba is committed to a cause that is striking a balance between the bench and the bar on one hand we strive hard to improve the quality of the life of the advocates who are the members of the bar and on the other hand we have been striving to maintain cordiality between the pension bar and we have been successful also in so far as the welfare of the members of the bar is concerned mmba has been holding these lectures ever since its inception in the year 2005 all the past presidents including the founder president mr isaac mohanlal mr subhash babu mahendran mr krishna veni all were enthusiastic in upholding the tradition of conducting this lecture series and during our tenure in 2022-23 we have been continuing the tradition by arranging for such a lecture every month one month we invite a judge and the next month we invite member of the bar this is the way in which we have been conducting the lecture series and this time we have the fourth session of this mmba queen designer lecture series to this occasion when we requested honorable mr justice d krishna kumar administrative judge he had readily agreed and he is now present i heartily welcome him on behalf of the members of the bar the moment he assumed office in madri bench within a month's time he has convened the bench at bar meeting and whatever promises made to the bar is being implemented and we are very much indebted to him for his commitment to the welfare of the members of the bar and i call him affectionately in his domestic name called saradi mr sundareshan he has been a close associate of our family my great grandfather my grandfather and his father were all good friends and i continue the friendship with mr sundareshan and when i ask him um, saradi can you just deliver a lecture next time when you come to madri he said yes why not today we have mr yarl sundareshan senior advocate and additional solicitor general of government of india to give a topic which is of much relevance today so i wholeheartedly welcome mr sundareshan for this happy evening i am very happy to have mr justice r vijay kumar to this event i am happy that uh, the senior members of the bar newly designated senior advocates including ms gandhi madi who has been my contemporary in the bar mr tsr venkatramana madam krishna veni mr armugam mr arul valivel segar and mr bala sundaram we are all here we are very happy to have you once again i welcome the members of the bar juniors and seniors members please await for the thought provoking insightful and meaningful session thank you one and all thank you sir to be inspired is great but to be an inspiration is an honor it's time for us to honor the guests who are our source of inspiration now may i request our president mmba mr srinivas raghavan to honor honorable mr justice d k krishna kumar administrative judge of madurai bench of metra high court with a memento may I now request mr ayram k selva kumar advocate to honor honorable mr justice d krishna kumar administrative judge of madurai bench of madras high court with the shawl may I now request mr venkatesh treasurer of mmba to honor senior advocate mr arl sundaresan additional solicitor general of india with a memento May I now request Mr D Sivaraman advocate to honor Mr R L Sundaresan senior advocate with the shawl
this event gains specific importance because our special guests today have come after becoming the additional solicitor general of india and in commemoration of the same now may I request our librarian of mmba mr k prabhu to present books to mr r l sundaresan additional solicitor general of india thank you success is in just about what you accomplish in your life it's about what you inspire others to do may I now request the person who continuously inspire us with his tireless efforts and valuable judgments honorable mr justice krishna kumar administrative justice madurai bench of madras high court to deliver the presidential address mr senior sir raghavan president of this association ap narayana kumar patrikatya general secretary mr gyal sundareshan senior advocate additional solicitor of india senior members of this association junior members and women lawyers for all present in this function good evening to all it gives me an immense pleasure to preside over this mmba queen disneal lecture series the today's topic is duties and responsibilities of senior lawyers and young lawyers for upholding the rule of law the topic is more important for the welfare of the legal fraternity as we all know the rule of law is the cornerstone of any democratic society and it ensures that everyone is treated fairly and equally under the law it is the most fundamental aspect of the indian constitution it is an essential element for maintaining peace stability and respect of human rights it is the responsibility of all lawyers regardless of their experience or seniority to work together to maintain this fundamental principle in this democratic society the rule of law also helps to protect the rights and freedoms of citizens it provides a mechanism for safeguarding individual rights such as freedom of speech religion and assembly this helps to create a society where individuals are free to express themselves and pursue their interest without fear of retribution senior lawyer is not only a guru but is a role model for the young lawyers the main object of this senior lawyer is mold the young lawyers to work hard with his sincerity and discipline to achieve more in the legal profession a lawyer is considered as a officer of the court his duty is not only to for the answerable to the client but is also properly assisting the court it is necessary to appreciate the role and advocates plays in this society as expressed by matthew j a council has tripartite relationship one is to the public another is with the court and the third is to his clients it is the unique feature no any other professional you didn't see this or these unique features together senior and young lawyer form a powerful force in the fight of justice and the rule of law by working together they can learn from each other share knowledge and collaborate to achieve their common goals senior lawyers can provide guidance and mentorship to young lawyers while young lawyers can bring new ideas and energy to the legal profession yeah i want to at this stage i want to say mr sundareshan who is now the senior advocate and additional solicitor of india before saying that uh, dr yar lakshmanan was uh, i can say that was a mentor to me also when i was a law officer in the year of uh, 1991 and i usually appeared before uh, this is lakshmanan court and uh, particularly i want to say how this uh, this is lakshmanan has maintained the decorum dignity of the court and also not only the safeguard the interest of it institution as well as for the junior members of the board when one advocate i don't mention the name but is a very uh, leading practitioner very honest and uh, maintaining the dignity of the court also but what happened is so one matter came before the particular on the education matters came before justice lakshman when i was a government advocate then uh, the year, the earlier hearing 
when the matter came and uh, this particularly is also within the jurisdiction of this madurai that particular college school is concerned and still there is a lot of litigation some case also came before me i think you are aware which is school is the concern then the phone there is there is hot and cold there was yeah arguments among the lawyers most uh, almost seven or eight lawyers in appeal the matter then he has asked me that the records were produced after purus of record the judge asked me to keep it in the gp office the next day when the records were produced then it was pointed by the other side i think the particular paper was missing in that record then now uh, what happened is uh, immediately without a minute he said don't make this kind of uh, make a statement against him because i directed the law officer to keep it in that gp office so don't make this kind of that immediately what happened is post is matter before the other judge because of the such statement made by the counsel so you may what happened after i came out he that another senior counsel was there another advocate was also there he still is practicing in the same court he said how you make a such kind of an allegation again he is only hardly about this said what it at the time i was just uh, uh, 30 32 years i think so 32 years then he made it what happened the lawyer also came to me to forget everything i mean some mistake has been committed he is also very senior man and uh, then that is what is maintain the decorum of this not only court to safeguard the interest of the junior members also so following his footsteps is for the sundresh i know him also from uh, say from students life he was participated in various moot court from the date of his enrollment i personally know him and we are interacted on several occasions in the bar association and also in other places where we are also discussed it uh, yes very very i can say that no, there's no words for to say that it's such a uh, the god the person and uh, he is now he is deserves for holding the post of vice chancellor of staff india and today he is the right person to give the speech on this particular subject so for that really mr srinivas ravan and his colleagues of his pubs have been rightly invited mr ravan sundaresan on this uh, topic giving the lecture on this topic so i end conclude by saying the role of law is vital for the functioning of a democratic society and the rule of law is a shared responsibility of all lawyers both young and senior lawyers have a crucial role to play in upholding it whether it is a senior or young or experienced or just starting out every lawyer by working together has a role to play in ensuring the justice is served and that everyone is treated fairly under the law and also to ensure that the legal system remains fair impartial and responsive to the needs of the people and help to build a more just and equitable society for all i urge all of you to remember the importance of your work continue to fight for the rule of law in your communities i congratulate the obvious bearers of the bar association for arranging this function in a grand success in the interest of all the members of the association once again i thank to all the members of this association thank you very much thank you judge a lecture is an occasion when you numb one end to benefit the other this program of fourth queen decennial lecture has made us sit together to have this pleasant evening i wish to have a short brief with pleasure on our guest of honor mr arl sundresan who belongs to a generation of lawyers and rich legal heritage an erudite lawyer and he possesses to be an sports enthusiast his benevolent contribution to sports of cricket among the legal fraternity in every year he is noteworthy he is also known for his art of persuasion and courtroom craft mr arl sundresan sir is well informed advocate and has deep insight in various field of law he is an open secret He has been designated as senior advocate in very young age. He was also former president of Madras Bar Association. He had 32 years of active practice in original side, constitution law, administrative law, civil appellate side, criminal side, taxation, company jurisdiction, environment law, etc. and Madras High Court principal bench and Madurai bench. He was standing counsel for AICTE Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University and Aragappa University Karaikudi recently has been appointed as additional solicitor general of India and we are privileged to make good use of this opportunity to honor him in this event i request mr arl sundresan to take over the podium uh,
அனைவருக்கும் இனிய மாலை வணக்கம் மிலாட் ஜஸ்டிஸ் கிருஷ்ணகுமார் ஆனரபிள் ஜஸ்டிஸ் விஜயகுமார் மை ஃப்ரெண்ட் பிரசிடண்ட் மிஸ்டர் ஸ்ரீனிவாஸ் ராகவன் அதர் ஆஃபீஸ் பேரர்ஸ் மை டியர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் சிட்டிங் இன் ஃப்ரண்ட் ஆஃப் மீ குட் ஈவினிங் டு ஒன் அண்ட் ஆல் அண்ட் ஐ எம் ஃபார்ச்சுனேட் டு ஹவ் பின் சோசன் டு ஸ்பீக் ஹியர் ஐ டேக் ப்ளெஷர் இன் சேயிங் தட் I am happy to speak here because Madurai is my birthplace and uh, I, have, I have addressed meetings for 5 minutes, 6 minutes, 7 minutes like that and I have not given any lecture on any topic anywhere till now and uh, this is the first lecture <laughs> and it is in my birthplace and Madurai bench where we are practicing from 2004, the year in which the bench was constituted. so thank you mr president for giving me this opportunity and uh, now coming to the topic duties and responsibilities of senior lawyers and young lawyers in upholding the rule of law i would say that there can be nothing segregated or discriminated between a duty of a senior lawyer or a junior lawyer in upholding the rule of law upholding the rule of law is the bounden duty of every lawyer only thing which we can say here is that the senior lawyers have got the duty but before i start into the topic i have to say i have to adopt the speech of uh, justice krishna kumar because justice krishna kumar has in his speech made an outline of what is the rule of law and what is the role of lawyers and how the senior should mold the junior so i am adopting it and i will not repeat just as we say in court when one senior completes the argument and the next senior takes over the judges will say yes you can continue but please don't repeat <laughs> now coming back to this topic what senior lawyers can do and what is expected of them is that a lawyer after his graduation goes to the bar council gets enrolled and then now there are interns they are acquainted with someone they come to the office and what we have to put in mind of the junior lawyers is that don't look at the money which you are getting from the profession from day 1 you may have a bail petition which you can argue in 5 minutes which can prepare in 5 minutes get 5000 rupees but don't look at that that is not going to carry you throughout all that is short time money therefore what the seniors have to do is that start something like the olden days gurukulam live like a family the juniors will have to uh, i i can say without fear of contradiction that all the stalwarts who have shined in this profession are persons who would have started as raw juniors who would have attended the office before the senior comes they'll go by cycle they'll go by cycle to the senior's office they'll go by 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock 8:30 or 9 they'll come back home get ready then go to court and then they'll come back only at 10 or 10:30 the uh, the word the phrase is come to the office before your senior comes leave the office after your senior goes that is what the juniors have to be taught by the senior if that happens then the time which is spent by the junior with the senior will be more and then the responsibility will be shared by both the junior will help the senior senior will teach the junior and both together will be a force as what uh, was spoken to by others there will be a force to uphold the rule of law now once we say that rule of law now we are all in a civilized situation democracy right human rights property tax everything is there you go to the constitution article 21 says nobody shall be deprived of his right to life without due process of law article 300 a nobody shall be deprived of his property without due process of law article 265 nobody shall be taxed without any authority of law therefore wherever it goes you are deprived of something then there should be a law that is where the role of a lawyer comes if a person is arrested then what are his remedies if a property is deprived what are his remedies if a tax is levied what are his remedies rule of law has to be upheld there is the role which the lawyer has one thing which we have to avoid is that our practice should be in the chambers and in the courts not in the police station and in the site where the property dispute takes place we will have to advise the client in our chambers inform him of what rights he has got 
inform him of what rights the opposite party may have and advise him of the consequences of the case the prospects of the case don't give any false hope to the client and lure him into litigation where at the inception itself you may know that he may not have a chance of success and by doing that the real cause can be fought the time of the court can be saved and the rule of law can be upheld something which we know you don't have a case at all it's better to advise him and then nip it in the bud itself now uh, all that we say is coming under the rule of law and the role of lawyers is something like what we the pledge which we take on the law day just like how we celebrate a birthday we celebrate a birthday just to remember that we are born in this world and we have to what we are enjoying every day we don't enjoy on the birthday alone we enjoy every day we remember the birthday like that the law day pledge which we take is not for 26 november alone law day pledge which we take is something which we should practice throughout every day we should act according to that pledge we are only uh, again remembering that this is our duty now if you just go to the i got two types of pledges which we take on the law day we hold that law is the common heritage and trust of mankind that administration of justice is one of the most fundamental functions of the state that judges and lawyers owe their allegiance by the traditions training and tenets of their noble profession to the cause and quest of justice we believe that the discipline of law is indispensably essential for the authoritative and peaceful resolution of all conflicts not by going to the police station not by going to the site and taking possession occupying having an advocate's board there then ask him to come and then evict us and then do all that that is peaceful resolution of all conflicts for ensuring orderly development of society for maintaining rule of law for promoting social justice for safeguarding liberty and for practicing basic human rights and fundamental freedom we affirm that the independence and impartiality of the judiciary and the freedom and independence of legal profession constitutes the sheet anchor of social order individual freedom and equal justice in our society then as lawyers what we say we acknowledge the social responsibilities and professional obligations of law in public interest and public service we emphasize in particular the need to ensure equal and universal access to the system of justice for the people especially this is more important especially for the poor the weak the deprived and the downtrodden and the need for legal literacy and legal aid and need for social audit evaluation of law for scientific rational and pragmatic law reform then we pledge on that day uh, we pledge and dedicate ourselves on this day law day to the premises and postulates of this proclamation so what we read and adopt on 26th november is something which we should follow all throughout there is one improved version of this which will be very very apt in the present context this oath says i take oath and hereby pledge that i at all times abide by the constitution respect its ideals and institutions and uphold the human rights of all my fellow beings recognizing that rule of law is the foundation of our constitutional system i shall forever renounce the use of violence bribery and corruption appeal to religious passions and promotion of religious and ethnic hatred therefore the emphasis here is while you are upholding the rule of law you ought not to resort to violence ought not to resort to bribery ought not to resort to corruption therefore what the seniors will have to inculcate in the juniors is that don't attempt to undertake any sharp practices don't attempt to win over the other side illegally don't attempt to corrupt the officers or the authorities whoever have got the authority to decide and don't play with religious and ethnic hatred and then i shall ceaselessly promote harmony and spirit of brotherhood uphold the dignity and equality of men and women and to the limit of my economic capacity provide help to the disabled and the deprived 
the rest of it is not required then as an advocate what are we in the institution judges are there to decide clients are there to come out with their facts come out with their evidence which they have but what we are it is said an advocate is considered as an officer of the court and is part of the court he should always respect and cooperate with the proceedings of the court the statement says a lawyer is and must ever be the highest priest at the shrine of justice a religious metaphor reflects the view of the lawyer's special role in the administration of justice the religious metaphor was developed in the context of viewing courts as shrines of justice and the lawyers as the ministers of courts of justice robed in the priestly garments of truth honor and integrity therefore the robe which we are wearing itself we are practicing a profession we can argue a case with whatever attire you are having but still there is something which is given to us in the form of a coat and a robe just to remind us that you are different from others you have got a responsibility you have got to act with integrity you have got to act with honor you have got to maintain the decency and decorum and dignity of the court just to remind all that that is what we are having a different attire than from what is there for others and now coming to what are the things that a lawyer is expected to do and what are the things that he is not expected to do they say that so far as criminal justice system is concerned every person who is an accused is entitled to have the best of the lawyers of his choice for defending him therefore if a person is not having a lawyer he is not capable of having a lawyer the duty is given to the state state will have to nominate a lawyer state will have to render the legal services to him when that is what is expected of a state to help the person to uphold the rule of law as a lawyer when someone comes to us ethics say that you don't have the authority to refuse to appear in a case you are bound to accept maybe the fees or whatever it is but then that is where the role and responsibility of a lawyer the the topic today is that the duties and responsibilities we should not consider this legal profession as of course we need money we need income we have to sustain juniors have to sustain but then money making is not the only aim and goal of this profession money making is to sustain ourselves but serving in accordance with what is expected of us in the constitution what is expected of us having given us this legal education that is what we have to see as our role and responsibility therefore one of the author he says that what are the duties that are there for a lawyer access to lawyers and legal service all persons are entitled to call upon the assistance of a lawyer of their choice to protect and establish their rights and to defend them in all stages of criminal proceedings then governments and professional associations of lawyers shall promote programs to inform the public about their rights and duties under the law and important role of lawyers in protecting their fundamental freedoms i can say here that the senior advocates forum chennai along with madras bar association they started an organization called neethi karangal that neethi karangal they were interacting with the legal services authority and wherever any habeas corpus case was not represented that case will be forwarded to this neethi karangal neethi karangal will lend the services of a senior advocate to appear in that case nobody should be should go without there being any uh, uh, advocate therefore even the senior advocates forum was coming forward to do that through neethi karangal that is what they say associations of lawyers should move towards extending their arm of help for the upholding the rule of law and then the government shall ensure that all persons are immediately informed by the competent authority of their right to be assisted by a lawyer of their own choice upon arrest or detention or when charged with criminal offence any such person who do not have a lawyer in all cases in which interest of justice so requires 
be entitled to have a lawyer of experience and comp competence commensurate with the nature of the offence. While saying so, they also say that duties of lawyers towards clients shall include advising clients on their legal rights and obligations and as to the working legal system in so far as it is relevant to the legal rights and obligations of the clients. This is what I said, that when a client comes to us, don't give him any undue promises, don't give him any undue hopes, advise him of what is there. Only then you will end up in upholding the rule of law. Then assisting the clients in every appropriate way and taking legal action to protect their interest. If you have to have an eviction done, go to the RLTOP court or go to the civil court, file a suit, have it done expeditiously and then do it. Assisting the client before courts, tribunals and administrative authorities where appropriate. Lawyers in protecting the rights of their clients and in promoting the cause of justice shall seek to uphold the human rights and fundamental freedoms recognized by national and international law and shall take at all times act freely and diligently in accordance with law and recognize standards and ethics of legal profession. Lawyers shall always loyally respect the interests of their clients. Guarantees for then the government shall ensure that uh, while we do all these things for the purpose of upholding the rule of law there is something which the government should do and should desist from doing. What they should do is that they should create legal awareness and lend the services of lawyers wherever lawyers are not there. What they should desist is, they should desist from threatening lawyers who undertake cases which the government may not be interested in. Some, somebody is being proceeded against by the government. But the person who is being proceeded against is entitled to be defended, whether it's a criminal case or it's a civil case. The government shall ensure that lawyers are able to perform all their professional functions without intimidation, hindrance, harassment and improper interference and shall not suffer or be threatened with prosecution or administrative, economic or other sanctions for any action uh, taken in accordance with the recognized professional duties and standards and ethics. And then <coughs> lawyers shall not be identified with their clients or the clients causes as a result of discharging their functions. Lawyers shall enjoy civil and penal immunity for relevant statements made in good faith in written or oral pleadings or in their professional appearances before court, tribunal or other administrative authority. These are all what the government or the state should not do so that a lawyer will be entitled to have a free hand in assisting uh, his, uh, uh, his client. And then the ethics that has been uh, framed, it is all well known, but then many of it, it, it is it's good that we remember at least once, uh, which is circulated by the Bar Council, all of us will have this in our hand on the day of our enrollment. And after that, uh, I think we have to read it. <laughs> See, as my Lord said, duty of a lawyer is not to his client alone duty to the opponent, duty to your client and duty to the court. Duty to the opponent, uh, this is where we have to avoid all these sharp practices. Mentioning a case in the absence of other side, getting an adjournment in the absence of other side, getting the interim order modified in the absence of other side or something like that. Or I don't want to use these words but then forum shopping, bench hunting, filing one case in this court, taking it to another court. All these, the duties of senior lawyers is that to tell the junior lawyers, please don't do all these things. Today you may be able to get an order. It is not one case which you are arguing. It is not one client for whom you are arguing. You are going to be in this institution for all time to come. Therefore, success in one case will ruin your entire life. If you uh, There is one uh, judge who said, please don't spoil your name. If the name is spoiled in my mind, to erase it from my mind will be very difficult. Therefore, ensure that in one, I am not saying that please lose the case because you may have 10 more cases tomorrow. 
don't do anything as a sharp practice in one case for the purpose of getting something which you might have unreasonably assured to your client by unreasonably assuring to your client something you will be induced to do, do something which is not correct and by doing something which is not correct and playing some tricks and a googly and then getting an order today it will not help your client because it will be vacated the next day it will not help you because that will be in the mind of the court and it will it will ruin your entire career therefore these are all things which we should avoid as a duty to the opposite side and as a duty to the court all of us would have seen the supreme court has gone to the extent of chiding even the president of the supreme court bar association by saying that please don't raise your voice our duty is to address the court our duty is to persuade the court our duty is to read the pleadings read the evidence read the law and plead before the judge that this is what is fair please do it this way if the court does not accept your point maybe it is right you will have to leave it and go to the next point you cannot keep hammering it again and again till the judge accepts your point that is not the duty of a lawyer that is not the responsibility of a lawyer therefore don't identify yourself with the cause don't identify yourself with the client it is a responsibility which we have go to the extent to which you have you can go beyond that you cannot go therefore you have to know where to stop this is the duty which we owe to the court this is the respect which you owe to the court and then duty to the clients you will always have to say to the client if you are interested in the cause in some other way he has to know it if you are interested in the other party if you have appeared for the other party in any other cause maybe in a different cause of action but the client is entitled to know that you know the opposite party in a different cause after saying that if the client says no matter i have confidence in you you please go ahead then you have a clean sheet you can go ahead otherwise it it, it is something which you are hiding that will keep pricking him at a later point of time and keep pricking you for the end of your life because if that case loses and that client thinks that you are avarku vendiyore adanalai case sariya nadathaan uttaaru appadina that that is something which you cannot remedy at all and then the duty of an advocate to the client even the bar council says bound to accept briefs an advocate is bound to accept any brief in the courts or tribunals or before any authority in or before which he proceeds uh, to propose to practice he should levy fees which is at par with the fees collected by fellow advocates of his standing at the bar and the nature of the case special circumstances may justify his refusal to accept a particular brief then not withdraw from the services we cannot say that i'll withdraw the case i'll file a memo and then uh, walk out not appear in matters where he himself is a witness then full and frank disclosure to the client this is what i was telling for some time then uphold the interest of the client not to suppress material or evidence an advocate appearing for the prosecution of a criminal trial should not i uh, should conduct the proceedings in a manner that it does not lead to conviction of the innocent an advocate shall by no means suppress any materials which shall prove the innocence of the accused not disclose communications between client and himself this is something which is uh, really privileged unless the client discloses everything to you freely and frankly you will not be able to judge what cause he has got what chances of success he has got therefore he may say good he may say bad he may say everything you are not uh, you are you are bound to maintain confidentiality with regard to that and this is very very important an advocate should not be a party to stir up or instigate litigation don't don't instigate litigation try to sort it out and advocate should not act on the instructions of any person other than his client or client's authorized agent not to lend money to the client then this is something which we all uh, i don't think uh, this is all bygone days uh, all mufassil practice they'll say they have account ledger account for each case that is filed 
இஃப் ஃபைவ் ஹண்ட்ரட் ருபீஸ் இஸ் ரிசீவ்டு வரவு ஐநூறுரூபா படி கட்டியது ஐம்பது ரூபா டைப் செலவு ஆல் திஸ் வில் பி தேர் அண்ட் அட் தி எண்ட் ஆஃப் த கேஸ் தேல் ரிட்டர்ன் தட் சிட் அண்ட் இஃப் தெர் இஸ் எனி பேலன்ஸ் தில் ரிட்டர்ன் தட் பேலன்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் வாட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ எக்ஸ்பெக்டட் ஆஃப் அ லாயர் அண்ட் திஸ் வாஸ் பீங் டன் இன் தேவகோட்டை ஃப்ரம் வேர் வி ஹெயில் அண்ட் ஆல் தி சீனியர் லாயர்ஸ் தேர் வர் டூயிங் இட் இல்லைன்னா செட்டியார் விட மாட்டார் and uh, coming to the role of uh, lawyers senior lawyers and junior lawyers in upholding the rule of law we are a profession where we say it's a noble profession and we are given that status as a noble profession because we are expected to serve the cause of somebody else we should not take up this status that is given to us as our might and try to exploit others and form divisions among others overpower others and uh, all this uh, very very untoward things have happened in the recent past wherever elections are held elections are all booth capturing is taking place no, nobody knows who is the cause for that nobody knows who should be blamed for that but then from the outside world everybody will see that advocates election this has happened lawyers election this has happened therefore all this should be kept away we should go back to the old system of something like gurukulam senior and junior long standing association should be there not be there in the seniors office for one year and then start separate practice and then uh, uh, separate practice after getting well trained in civil law criminal law yes very good if you are fortunate yes very good but not to go for any sharp practices not to go for any Uh, short term gains like that and uh, only if we go back to the junior senior gurukula system and the juniors look to the seniors like their parents and seniors look to their juniors like their own children only then one will pass on to the other and one will learn from the other and all of us will learn the responsibility which we have to the society and we will all uphold the rule of law i i appeal to all here that let us all help the clients through the courts by working from our chambers and not resort to any other thing anywhere else either in the police station or in the sites or in the association rooms by fighting among each other thank you very much i thank gandhi madhi for giving me all the material which i spoke normally i don't interrupt uh, after the chief guest addresses the podium but today i think it's my duty to say that how meaningful was his lecture and how insightful was his lecture and how thoughtful was mr yeah well sundar is and adopting the prevo or prelog given by our lordship uh, krishna kumar so this particular address of uh, our um, dear member of the bar is addressed to each and every of us sitting here and who are missed the lesson today so i standing here with all overwhelmed uh, emotion to see that this message is carried forward to one and all by us from here to our offices to our juniors to our elders and everybody in the bar though it will be available in the youtube channel of mmba i request all the members of the bar to take this very very seriously as a personal message in token of appreciation i clap mr yar sundar sir once again with a whole heart thank you thank you mr sundar it was an influencing guidance sir being a junior will take your advice as sincerely and will follow it sir thank you for enlightening us as how we should ethically practice as an advocate now it's time to thank one and all this occasion is supposed to be proposed by kp narayana kumar general secretary of mmba due to his non availability of personal preoccupation we here invite mr s vinod to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of team of mmba 2022 23 i whole heartedly thank honorable mr justice d krishna kumar administrative judge madurai high court bench for accepting our invitation and to preside over the function thank you very much
I also thank Honorable Mr. Justice R. Vijay Kumar for accepting the invitation and gracious in this occasion. Thank you, Lordship. On behalf of MMBA, we wholeheartedly extend our gratitude to Mr. A.R.L. Sundaration, Senior Advocate and Additional Solicitor General of India for his thought-provoking lecture about the role of the lawyers, both seniors and juniors, in upholding the rule of law. The topic chosen by the speaker is highly relevant for the present scenario and we are thankful to the guest of honor for highlighting the duties and the responsibilities of senior lawyers and young lawyers. Thank you, sir. We thank senior advocates, Ms. Krishnaveni, former president of MMBA, Mr. Subaya, sir, Mr. T.S.R. Vingat Ramana, Mr. Balana Sundaram, sir, Mr. Arul Vadivil, sir, sir, Ms. A.L. Gandhi Bandi, ma'am. I also thank the office bearers of uh, Friendly Bar Association for accepting our invitation and gracing this occasion. We acknowledge with gratitude and support and patronage extend to this event by Mr. Ayram K. Selvakumar, sir, and Mr. D. Sivaraman and Mr. J. Anand Kumar. I thank the office bearer of MMBA for their support and assistance in conducting this lecture in a successful way. I thank the staff of MMBA for their able assistance. I thank Mr. Jayamogan and Ms. Sveta. I thank the press and media for continuous support throughout the program. I thank the senior members of the bar and the young junior lawyers who have assembled in number. Thank you. Thank you much.